Okay, today we are in Matthew 9, verses 9 to 13. This Matthew, or this Matthew is the author of the book. He is a tax collector for the Roman Empire, which means he is often involved in extortion, bribery, and cheating his own people. Tax collectors were often Jews who were serving Rome while cheating other Jews. Because of that, they were despised people. But he must have been a man with some kind of ache in his heart and a desire to repent. Something must have been stirring in him that Jesus was able to perceive. You see, Jesus needed people from all walks of life to follow him. He needed poor and rich, Jew and Gentile, or else people would, or else people would accuse, oh, his message is only for this group of people. To have Matthew as one of his followers would speak loudly about his message of grace and forgiveness. <clears throat> And Matthew was also able to connect with people that other disciples could not. Of all the disciples, Matthew probably gave up the most to follow Jesus. As Jesus said, to whom much has been given, much shall be required. He was putting himself out of a job forever. He could never come back to it. He would have been rejected by his family because of what he had done. He would have been hated by his neighbors, and now he would be despised by even the Romans. The Romans were trying to hire people who were willing to get their hands dirty to do a dirty job. But the other disciples would also have a hard time accepting Matthew. This would truly show whether God's love can change everybody's heart. If these fishermen whom Matthew had probably cheated, could accept Matthew as a follower of Jesus, that would speak loudly. And if Matthew could be friends with the fishermen, that would just show the change that Jesus made. See, if Matthew had become a disciple, it would show the world how people who used to hate each other could live together in love and unity. They would show that forgiveness and reconciliation can be real. By choosing Matthew, Jesus is showing that it's possible to love one's enemies. No better way than to put them together. So Jesus is living out what he's teaching. Everyone is welcome to come and be part of his family. Everyone. And he is able to break down the barriers that separate people, no matter what those barriers are. Remember, Jesus has just shown that he can forgive sins. So what better move to make than to choose a sinner and forgive him? Now, notice that Matthew invited Jesus to dinner at his house, which is a sign of fellowship. And Jesus went, which is a sign of acceptance. And we read that Matthew invited his friends to meet Jesus, which is something we should all be doing. And when, when all of Matthew's sinful friends came and Jesus was glad, it seems, to have a chance to create a relationship with them. Some people were very critical that Jesus would dare be in the company of such sinners. They would be horrified and think that he was making a mistake. They would think it would ruin his influence, uh, that they would lose respect and violate what they stood for as religious people. But there is nothing in the text to indicate that Jesus was not perfectly comfortable here because it was Jesus' intent to do whatever was necessary and expedient to reach all people. And here he lives that out. And he reaches out especially to those who are despised by other people. So the religious leaders want to know, why does Jesus eat with such sinful people? If I can read between the lines, they were probably thinking that a truly religious person who wanted to be close to God 
We need to separate themselves from the contamination of sin. But that's not how sin contaminates. See, Jesus is showing us that there is a difference between the sin and the sinner. This is where we get our, our saying, hate the sin, but love the sinner. And Jesus gives the answer. It's not the healthy people who need a doctor, but the sick people. Jesus is identifying the distinction between the disease itself and those who have the disease. It's the disease that's the problem, not the person. The person needs help. The person needs a healer. The disease needs to be rejected. The disease needs to be killed. Jesus came to heal the world. We need to let people know that they matter, that they're not alone in their struggles, and that hope and help are real. Then he says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I've come to call the righteous, not the, the righteous, not, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Because his mission was to find the lost and bring them to repentance and forgive them. I was wondering if there are any comments or questions. So Shoro was saying that he liked to hear that Jesus sat with the sinful people. And that tells him that Jesus could forgive them. He could make them holy. So forgive their sins and make them uh, a set of a reconciliation with God. So that's why he he, uh, he sat with them and make them clean and uh, forgive them, forgave them. And uh, that, that's he like to know. Yes, it would be quite hypocritical of Jesus to say he forgives everybody and that he seeks sinners, but then refuse to fellowship with certain sinners. So what Brother Tapos is saying that interesting to see this man Matthew left everything what he had, the reputation, the whale, and followed Jesus, starting following him. There's a huge sacrifice that he had made, and that's a, a kind of uh, inspiration, motivation, and also says that he had seen the truth of Jesus. He could find the truth into Jesus. That's why he valued the truth rather than the earthly thing. Uh, good comment. Good comment. What she liked, actually, Jesus, she found that Jesus is uh, mixing up with the uh, sinners. And uh, she went, he went to the sinners, lived with them, spent time with them, and uh, <clears throat> accepted them. And that's what, by understanding that he came for them, he came for the sinners, and he did his job. He didn't say by mouth only, but he did it. In the contrast, we have a contrast of culture in our, our society. What we do, we try to highlight the rich people who are good, who we want to mix with, we want to live with them, we, love, we like to spend time with them, we like to invite them in our house. But the sinners or the poor people, we leave them aside. But Jesus, he shows himself in a contrast that he is different. And as a Christian, we should follow Jesus, not following the society actually. Right. <clears throat> right. Excellent comment. Right. Jesus... Now, Jesus, when we say he accepted them, remember, he, he accepted them after repentance. Uh, he does not accept people's sin, but if they repent and come to him, he accepts them on the basis of their repentance and faith in coming to him. 
he does not accept their sin jishu tini eta khub bhalo ekta montobo kakale bodhi korechen ebong jishu so shok brothers say brother shok say that uh, he like to hear all the comments those are good excellent and uh, uh, he has no comment but he like to hear those okay okay that's fine <clears throat>